What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Fantasy Time. I am your host, Jacob Cub, the Fantasy Guy, and today, today, I have a very special episode for you. It is another week's edition of Meet on the 50, and as always, joining me, one of my best friends, Brandon Sullivan, and together we are going to break down the slate of games that we have on tap for you. And we have a full slate of games, but but let's let's just let's just get it out there. Definitely re-recorded this intro. Uh, I have a couple things to tell you guys. A, massively, massively, massively sorry that it's taken me forever to get this video out. Uh, I came down with a pretty bad cold that is just kicking my ass the last couple days. A uh, c- couple problems with editing and everything like that. So, with all of that, with all of that going on, we did it. We did it. Just like I said in my Facebook post, we're having that ant mentality, right? If you put an obstacle in front of an ant, what happens? You're going to watch this ant do anything that it can to get through it, over it, under it, around it, whatever it can to get through this obstacle. So we're having an ant mentality. Nothing is getting in our way from stopping us from dropping two videos a week, and we're doing it. No matter what, no matter when, we are doing it. B, the nice thing is we now have three more days of football. Yes, so this episode is going to drop now on Sunday because of all the technical difficulties and me being sick. This episode is going to drop on Sunday, but we still have two more days after Sunday. We have games on Monday and games on Tuesday. You are not going to want to miss it. I promise you, I guarantee you, we have a full slate and we have all the info, all of the information, all our thoughts, our analysis, all our predictions, expectations, any, all of that, all of that, anything, all of that you can handle, we are bringing it to you. So at any point during this video, please smash that like button, smash the subscribe button, just tap on that bell notification to stay up to date on all the latest content because we're dropping it every Wednesday and Friday normally, okay? This is one of those rare special weeks, okay? But normally every Wednesday and every Friday, we got content dropping. We're always dropping the knowledge. It's right there at your feet. Just gotta look down, pick it up, shoving the head of your shaking around, and boom, better fantasy player, better football knowledgeable human being, right? Because if you're not growing, you are dying. So smash that like button, smash the subscribe button, just tap on that bell notification to stay up to date on all the latest content. But again, super sorry that this took forever to drop for you guys. But without further ado, let's get into it. Another weekly edition of Meet on the 50. Alrighty, we are back for another week of Meet on the 50. As always, joining me, you guys know him by now, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. One of my best friends, Brandon Sullivan. Before I even ask you, because you already know what I'm going to ask you, we know, we know, we all know what happened last week, okay? We all know you're feeling good. We all know your team won last week. Aside from that, aside from that, how you doing? Yeah, I'm I'm doing uh, good. Just, you know, just rolling through the week and just, uh, you know, looking forward to the weekend because we have a full slate of games, so that'll be cool. Um, we got a couple games on Saturday, so that's that's you know that's always exciting. Yep. And uh, I can and then you know we you know we got the full slate on Sunday. We got some good matchups coming up, so definitely looking forward to the weekend. There should be some entertainment there. I like it. Yes, I, I, I am excited. I, I don't want to spoil the surprise just yet because come on, mate, come on. Not, not all the audience knows that there's Saturday games. Okay, we got to kind of sprinkle it in there. Right? We'll get to it though. We'll get to it. But but first, like we do every week, let's put the overall season totals on the screen. Alrighty, there they are for yourself. One thirteen eighty and one nine and four in the guaranteed victories the reason why i emphasize the 80 is because last week i made a miscalculation uh for those of my mathematicians out there they may have noticed it uh but you are at 80 losses for the year not bad one game not gonna kill you especially after this week we're gonna get into it because you had dynamite week this week uh but 113 80 and one nine and four in the guaranteed victories absolutely kicking this season's ass for myself, 117, 76, and 1, 8, and 5 on the guaranteed victories. Right at your heels. Right at your heels. One game behind you for that guaranteed victory tie. Two games behind that guaranteed victory lead. I don't know. You got a good week this week. But let's let's get into it. Let's see how you did last week. Right, so Starting with yourself. Let's put it up on the screen. Boom. There it is. Yes. He's back to the domination, ladies and gentlemen, and and you'll see we absolutely dominated this schedule like we've been doing all season long. 11-3, couldn't be stopped, could not be stopped last week. 
1-0 in the guaranteed victories. The pack attack came through on a, a, a thrilling, a thrilling Sunday night football game. Who would have thought against the Bears? Uh, but the Packers coming through 11-3, 1-0 on the guaranteed victories. Overall for the season, putting you at 124, 83-1, 10-4 on the guaranteed victories. Uh, when you see that, 124, 83 and 1, 10 and 4 in the guaranteed victories. How you feeling? How, how you, how, we're not done yet. We still got a little bit more time to go. But, but how you feeling? How you feeling about this season so far? Yeah, I, I feel good because, you know, I didn't know what to expect going into this season. I, you know, I thought, I, I was hoping I would have more wins than losses. But, yeah. um, you know, I'm pretty confident in, uh, you know, just, you know, my ability to, to make picks. And yep. that's what's good because this is what this was all about was trying yep. to figure out if we could keep up with some of those big those big name analysts right and this proves that you know we you know we're able to analyze the games pretty well and we're able to to make you know follow our Very intuition true. and make some pretty solid picks so i'm feeling good about both of us and, and kind of where we're at i love it i love it absolutely very solid very solid start to the season. We're not done yet. More games to win. I'm I'm sure of it. So I'm excited to see what we finish at at the end of the season. Looking at my week, 10 and 4, 1 and 0 on the guaranteed victories. We had that double guaranteed victory last week with the Packers. Again, coming through on Sunday night and a thriller. It was Sunday night, right? Monday was uh, who was Monday? Yeah, it was Sunday night. Monday was Arizona. That's right. And, uh, that great game as well. Another great game. We had some good primetime games yeah. this week. Yeah, like like we've had all season long. Some really good primetime games. Overall, for the season, that puts me at 127, 80, and 1, 9, and 5 on the guaranteed victories. You are only three games behind the tie. Let's see if you can make it up this week. But, but. Looking at last week real fast, and I only got two questions for you. We're going to bring back the questions. There were zero upsets. Zero upsets last week. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pretty much every game went as we kind of expected, as most people kind of kind of expected them to go. My first question for you. With the change that we saw in the NFC playoffs, that, that picture last week, right? Because it definitely shifted. Which team do you think has the most pressure on them? One through one through seven right now. Which team has the most pressure on them to perform at this current moment? I would say Arizona, um, just because when you're talking about uh, like having the number one seed, it's it's so the dynamic is so different now because there's only one team that gets a bye week, yep. and that's so crucial yep. for a team. Um, that, you know, DeAndre Hopkins having that injury yeah. and just, just a team that's kind of plagued with injuries and um, who's trying to, you know, rehabilitate their team and try to get back. Having that bye week would be big for a team um, like Arizona. Um, it's not as big for the Buccaneers who, for instance, went on a three three game road win streak in the playoffs last year uh, to, to go on to the Super Bowl. Yep. And then um, we know that Aaron Rodgers can play well on the road as well too. Um, so um, I think the pressure is now back on Arizona because after that loss to LA, they have now shifted to the three seed. Yep. And Big so, um, yeah, not that they can't win that, but I mean, that changes the dynamic because you know you're probably going to have to play a game on the road and you're not getting a bye week. So I'm going to say Arizona. I like it. I like it. Now, looking at the AFC, let's look at the other conference. Looking at how this season has gone. With the AFC, the way the playoff picture looks right now, are you leaning more towards a division winner to have more success in the playoffs? Or are you going to lean with one of these wild card teams to make a run? Yeah, I think it's going to be a division winner. Okay. I think it's it's going to come down to, um, I think, mainly um, Kansas City and um, New England. Okay. I think that those two teams have the best chance of advancing to the Super Bowl. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to go with the division winner. I like that. I like that. Yeah. So I'm going to be with you on the first question. I, I'm with you. Arizona definitely has the most pressure uh, on themselves. 
to, to not only win the rest of their games, but hope that Tampa Bay and Green Bay loses another game. That way they can slip back in to that one seed because the Packers hold the game over them. So they're not leapfrogging the Packers. So they need the Packers to drop a game. They need the Bucks to drop a game. And uh, I actually think it's going to be one of these wild card teams because I'm not so sure who is going to win this AFC West yet. I'm not sure if the Chargers are going to win it. I'm not sure if the Chiefs are going to win it. And if the Chiefs are a wild card team, probably one of the most dangerous wild card teams uh, besides the Bucks last year that we're probably going to see in recent history. So uh, there is still a lot to be decided, but I'm going to lean more towards one of these wild card teams making some massive noise this season in the playoffs. All right, nice and easy, right? Just two questions for you this week. I just had two questions on my mind that I wanted to ask you, so we're going to wipe off that screen because we are done with last week. We are turning our attention to this week. And like I like to say, just like a newspaper, we are turning the page. We're done with last week's news. We're turning the page to this week's news. We're focusing on this week. And like you said, like you, like, like you kind, of, kind of hinted at it in the beginning, we have a banger of a schedule this week. We have a full schedule this week. What does that mean? We have Saturday football. Not college football. We got Saturday NFL football. One of two weeks. I believe next week we also get some Saturday football. So you better be ready. But we got a full slate of games. So let's get into it. Starting us off for everybody yesterday. For us tomorrow. We got a massive one. We got a massive game to kick us off. And I am so excited. We got the Kansas City Chiefs traveling to SoFi for only one time this year. We're going to find out. Traveling to SoFi to take on the Los Angeles Chargers. What do you got for me? Yeah, the, the Chiefs have played very well uh, for consecutive weeks. And um, this is kind of a, you know, this is going to be a marquee matchup in the AFC West. Um, you know, I think it could go both ways just because it's a divisional matchup. And with the way that Mahomes is playing and the way that Herbert's playing, either offense could show up and really dominate. So um, I expect it to be, um, you know, I would say a, a pretty low scoring first half, but then it, I feel like they come out firing in the second half. Um, I am, you know what, I'm going to go out on a limb and kind of make things exciting here. I'm going to go with um, the Los Angeles Chargers. I think they upset the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I think they win this one, and a close one, 35-31. to 31. Oh, so close, so close. to kick. We would have kicked it off. That would have been a way to kick it off right there And what should be an extremely competitive game. Uh, I, I think the Chargers do it again. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I, I, and I'm not going out on the limb. I am confidently saying that Justin, the real deal, Evander Holyfield, Herbert, comes out and gets the KO blow to the Chiefs again. And here's a stat line for you. The first time the Chargers sweep the Chiefs since 2013. We're talking eight years here. So I think Justin Herbert does it. This would be a huge step for the Chargers huge step who would who would then essentially take over control of their own destiny in the AFC West they would be the sole they would be the sole reason they miss the playoffs they make the playoffs they win the division they're a wild card team because they would hold both games over the Chiefs clearly the Broncos aren't winning the division sorry Denver fans don't mean to be rude but you're not winning it in Las Vegas uh, we'll just leave it at that they ain't winning they ain't winning uh, we, it's between the Chargers and the Chiefs. So the Chargers are going to be the ones who could solely control their destiny with this win. Chargers, 35, so close. 28 in an absolute banger. Total surprise. I mean, who would have thought that the Los Angeles Chargers would could win? Could. They, like, this is a real possibility. Could win the AFC West this season. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Moving on to our Saturday game. Saturday? Football on Saturday? You're damn right, football on Saturday. We got NFL action starting us off Saturday. We got the Las Vegas Raiders traveling to, to just COVID US, like COVID Central, it feels like. Cleveland, the city of Cleveland, because the Browns who have been massacred by the COVID, by COVID, the COVID list. I mean, their entire team is basically on that COVID list. Las Vegas Raiders traveling to Cleveland to take on the Cleveland Browns. What do you got for me? 
at this point in time, um, you know, just revisiting last week, um, the, the blowout that Las Vegas endured against Kansas City, um, you know, this kind of reminds me of when um, the Raiders lost, I think it was somewhere around 55 to 10 against the uh, now Los Angeles Rams. They were St. Louis back then in St. Louis. Kind of reminds me of that game. Uh, but they had a bounce back game the next game and they, they beat us. So, um, you know what? I'm going to say that the Raiders come out. They don't have anything to lose. You know, the, the, their, their backs are not against the wall anymore. You know, people have already given up on them. So I feel like the pressure is no longer there. People already expect what they expect. Um, so, and then you got on the on the flip side, you got Cleveland. They got a bunch of players on, you know, like you said, the COVID list, yep. which is unfortunate. I hate to see those numbers going up again um, because, you know, we're almost two years into this pandemic and, you know, it just seems as though maybe we have, you know, something returning here. So uh, we just need to get away from that because we don't want fans being limited. We don't want players to, you know, um, not be at full strength. Yep. You know, every time the 49ers play somebody, uh, you know, I, I want the other te- the other team to have all of their players activated. I don't care who, because I, me, if we beat them, then there's no excuses, yep. that kind of thing. Um, I, you, you like to see both teams be healthy. So I'm going to pick the Raiders here. I think that the Raiders win this one in a close one. I'm going to say 24 to 17. Uh, but I think that uh, they come out, you know, they, they kind of say, kind of embarrass ourselves last week. Let's kind of try to come together and try to get this win uh, against a depleted Cleveland team. Um, let's go ahead and uh, pull out this victory. So I'm going to pick the Raiders here. You know, I, we're thinking I like today because if the Browns did not have 14 players out on the COVID list, including their starting O-line, including their starting tight ends, including their starting wide receivers, uh, Browns win this game, I think, easily with the way the Raiders have been playing. But I have to think, I, you have to think, with all those obstacles in a team's way that the Raiders can just for one time in their life get out of their own way and win a game. I mean, holy moly. I, I don't think I've ever physically laughed during a football game, but when I was what I was watching last week physically made me laugh. And I, I don't think I've ever done that during a football game. So uh, after a comedic performance, I didn't realize that they were comedians. Uh, I mean, they are in Vegas, so it makes sense that they're all about the show. But uh, uh, I mean, holy moly, uh, I'm with you. I got the Las Vegas Raiders. Hopefully, handling business and against a team with, that is in a super tough situation. Uh, I got the Raiders 28-21, helping them not, not finish under 500. Let's just put it like that. Uh, in the prime time slot, we got a good one here. We got the New England Patriots traveling to Indiana, to the city of Indianapolis, to take on the Indianapolis Colts. What do you got for me? With this one, this one's a really uh, tough one because, you know, Indianapolis has has played very well uh, down the stretch of this season, but New England has been, you know, firing on all cylinders as far as their run game and their defense, and and those two things are vital to winning a a Super Bowl championship, Um, and, you know, when your quarterback doesn't have to throw any more than three passes, um, you know that your running game is solid. Um, it's just yeah, just thinking about that and running it back. I mean, it is funny. I mean, a person completes two out of three passes, so he only had two completions. Yep. Um, that's like some 1950s, you know. Yep. That's volleyball. You know what I mean? So, man, um, yeah, this one's really, really <laughs> tricky for me. But I, I'm gonna go ahead and pick New England just because they've been on a winning streak. I think that it continues. I think that coming off a of bye week, they have. Um, they, they're well rested, and um, I think that they're able to beat Indianapolis on the road. I think it's a close one, although I do think New England pulls it off, uh, 28 to 24. Yeah, you know this game should be an interesting one, and uh, you know I'm happy it's the primetime game. I'm happy they put this game in a primetime slot because uh, it definitely belongs there with the way that these two teams have been playing. I think the Colts coming off the bye, they're at home. They I, they end that Patriots streak, right? Both of those teams coming off a bye. I, I think it's better for the Colts that they don't have to travel to Foxborough to play outdoors after a bye. I think it's much 
benefits them. And I think we see a massive game from Jonathan Taylor. You know, lots of teams are trying to stop him, and they just realize that they you really can't stop him because he's not only can run it up through the tackles, he can run it outside, he can catch the screen, he can catch the little wheel routes, he can catch the little outside passes. Jonathan Taylor has so many ways that he can beat you, it is extremely hard to stop that. So I think Jonathan Taylor and the Colts, not Carson Wentz and the Colts, Jonathan Taylor and the Colts at home Hand New England a, a, for the Bills' sake, a much-needed loss. A much-needed loss. I got Indianapolis 35-24 and an absolute thriller of a primetime game. Great game. Great game that we get to watch on Saturday night. But we are moving on to Sunday morning because we got, and speaking of them, we got the Carolina Panthers traveling to Buffalo to take on the Buffalo Bills. What do you got for me? Man, Carolina and Buffalo, these two teams have been uh, definitely a disappointment on the second half of the season. Um, you know, seeing Cam get benched and then coming back out, it's just that, that situation is very, uh, very strange. Um, it's very unpredictable, very inconsistent. Yep. I don't think that, um, you know, Carolina is going to figure that thing out this season. I think that they're going to struggle with that for the rest of the year. Um, Cam Newton, um, you know, I, I think that there, you know, I think he should be in, I think he's good for one thing and that's, you know, play action packages, yeah. or packages where he can come in and possibly get you a goal line touchdown because he's a beast on the goal. Yep. Um, he's, you know, I think, I, I don't know what the stats say, but I'm assuming that he has the most like, uh, like, he, like quarterback runs within the first oh, five. Yeah, yeah I, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, over the like the, the span of the last 20 years. Like, I haven't seen anybody outdo him with that. But, um, yeah, I, I think that they continue to struggle. But Buffalo's also struggling. Buffalo desperately needs this one because, man, I, yeah. if you were to tell me that they were going to drop the games that they've dropped, I would be shaking my head at you. So, um, I'm going to say Buffalo wins this one. I think that they get a well needed win. Um, I think they win this one 31 to 17 against Carolina because one thing solid on Buffalo and that is Josh Allen. Yep. So um, I think that he comes through and they are able to pick Carolina apart. I don't think I think Carolina the problem here is they struggle to put points on the board. Yep. Yep. I, I, I like it. Yeah, you know, after seeing after seeing Buffalo's season essentially come to an end last week, uh, it's very apparent. That even if they get into the playoffs, they're, they're not going to make much noise. Uh, you need a running game. You simply do not have it, no matter what you do. And Josh Allen, he's a quarterback. He's not a running back. So uh, Buffalo, like you said, needs this win. They need it. And I, you bring up a good point, right? Buffalo's loss last week wouldn't have been so bad if they wouldn't have dropped the games that they dropped this season. They've dropped some absolute stinkers of some games that have just crippled, just absolutely crippled their season. Uh, and now every single game is now a must win. You have to win every single game in order for you to either win the division or stand some sort of chance in the playoffs. Uh, because what we've been seeing over these last couple weeks, you ain't doing nothing. You are not doing absolutely nothing this season with the way you've been playing. Uh, I mean, this team's in serious trouble. They're only in the playoffs because the Bengals lost. I mean, they can thank the Bengals for keeping them in the playoffs right now. But I think, you know, if they don't get it together, they'll be out of the playoff picture very quickly here. With that being said, they are better than the Panthers. Cam's time has come. And I, I texted you over the weekend. Cam, at this yeah. point, all he's really doing is he's just hurting his chances to get into the Hall of Fame. All these getting taken out, getting put back in, taken out, put back in, cut from this team, cut from that team, not really having success. You're, you're putting a stain on what was a remarkable career, a career that nobody expected you to have, and a career that defied all the real odds that people really gave you. So you're really hurting those chances. So at this point, I think he just needs to retire, be done with it, hang it up. He had a great career, call it what it is, but I got Buffalo here, 33-23. Uh, Buffalo needs this one, like you said. Must wins rest of the season here. Next up, we got the Arizona Cardinals traveling to the Motor City of Detroit to take on the Detroit Lions. What do you got for me? Yeah, um, guaranteed victory on this one. Ooh. I think Arizona bounces back from, uh, you know, a disappointing loss on Monday night. 
Um, I know that, uh, you know, they, they struggled, their offense struggled there, and then obviously the defense uh, wasn't able to contain uh, that flashy Rams offense. So um, I'm going to say that Arizona goes into Detroit and gets uh, gets the victory here. I'm going to say Arizona wins this one um, 35-28. to 28. Yeah, you know, after a tough loss at home against the Rams last week, and then even tougher, dropping all the way down to the three seed with that loss, the Cardinals have to go on the road. However, what better team to go on the road against than the Detroit Lions? So uh, I think Cardinals handle business here, keeping pace with the Packers and the Bucks for that number one seed because they got to win. They got to win, and they got to hope the Bucks and the Packers lose. I got the Arizona Cardinals 42-14 to in an absolute blowout. Blowout in Detroit. Next up, we got the New York Jets traveling to the Sunshine State of Florida to take on the Miami Dolphins. What do you got for me? I'm thinking Miami is going to win this one. Um, you know, I think Miami has played very well uh, at home all season, and I think their defense is definitely good enough to contain the New York Jets. Like I said, the New York Jets have been very underwhelming. But, however, they, they you know, that's kind of what we – you know, preseason, what we talked about. I mean, this is one of the teams that we expected to struggle. Yeah. And, and um, I, I know that, you know, people have been, you know, um, you know, pretty critical of Robert Sala. I've heard some, you know, people say that. But if we can recall, uh, as Kyle Shanahan started out 0-9 as our head coach. Yep. So I, that's going to take some time to pan out. Um, it's not going to come together in the first season with a team that has known to struggle. So... Um, yeah, it's just the Jets, you know, throughout my entire life, you know, aside from a couple runs from um, Vinny Testaverni, I mean, we're taking it back to yeah. when I was on the playground. And um, also Mark Sanchez. Um, those years, I mean, other than that, and, and those weren't like, you know, amazing years, but they did get to the AFC Championship and some things like that. So, um, and then, you know, I remember uh, Chad Pennington too. So I, I remember a couple of their quarterbacks and um, yeah, they just haven't really been able to put things together and put a run together, um, you know, keeping a team intact. And, um, and so they just continue to struggle. So I think Miami um, knows this opponent very well, and I think Miami's able to secure the win here 24 to 10. Yeah, you know, in a game that the Dolphins need to have, have to have, you know, th this is a very, very winnable matchup. And, you know, what if I told you that, that after the way the Dolphins started the season, what if I told you that this team has the chance to make the playoffs? With everything that's happened with this season, this team has has a chance to simply slide into that wild card spot. They only have seven losses. The the Bills have six losses. I mean, they're one game out I of the wild card right now. They I have to, that happens. Yeah, they have to keep winning, right? And just they have to win the rest of these games. If 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 this is if this is not the comeback of the ages, I don't know what is. But I think this is also a a a a, 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 a blueprint, I should say, for teams to use. That it doesn't matter how how you start in a 17 week or I guess an 18 week season. Now it really does not matter how you start because if the Dolphins can somehow complete this comeback and make the playoffs, uh, it really goes to show that you can start off horribly and still clinch a playoff with this extra game being added. Uh, we alluded to it earlier on in the season. This extra game feels like they've added, you know, two to three extra weeks to the season. Uh, it's crazy the, the, the amount of room that this 17th game actually gives some teams. So And the 17th. Yeah. You mean, you're, you're talking about uh, another, an entirely another team yep. in your conference that is going to make the playoffs. Not only adding a game, you're adding an additional True. team which ups your chances, yeah. right? Because you only had a, you know, out of, you know, you have 16 teams in each conference. Yep. You know, you, you're only one of six. Now we're talking about seven. That's yep. almost half the conference. Yep, that's true. That's a very good point as well, right? So that extra that extra conference spot and that extra week, it, it, we're going to see, we're going to see some crazy things happen while this, this, this rule this extra week all this stuff is in place i guarantee you we're gonna see some crazy turnarounds made by some teams i got the miami dolphins winning at home 32 17 uh they gotta win rest of their games next up we got the dallas cowboys traveling to new york to take on the new york giants what do you got for me 
Yeah, uh, Dallas played it very well against the Washington football team um, last week. And um, I know that they kind of botched a couple things at the end and, you know, uh, Washington kept it close. Yeah. And uh, what I have to say to that is Washington, they, 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 they're fighters, yep. they fight. You know, they kind of dug themselves too deep of a hole to come yeah. back in. But um, they, I give them credit for a valiant effort there at the end of the game. It kind of gave us something to watch. It was exciting to see. So, um, but... Um, I think Dallas uh, goes to uh, New York, and I think that they lay it on them. I think that they're going to win this game, twenty-eight to ten. I think that they blow New York out. Yeah, this season is, is this season's getting really interesting because now Dallas has to win the rest of their games. I don't think they can afford a loss either. With the Philadelphia right at nipping at their heels, with Washington still nipping at their heels, they went from one game down to two games. I mean. It, 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 <laughs> This season is long from over. This season is long from over. You know, uh, that loss, that would have been a huge loss last week. If they would have blown if they would have blew that game last week, that would have been a massive massive loss. Uh, and I don't think they would have I don't know if they would have recovered. They got the win. The offense doesn't look great. Dak's not playing amazing, but I think this I think this is the game where they kind of tie everything up, get their P's and Q's aligned, right? They they handled the New York Giants 42 to 28. Uh getting a little bit of an extension a little bit more of a lead in that nfc east but it's still not over still not over by a long shot because we got another division game following right behind them and that is the washington football team taking on the philadelphia eagles this, this a lot of things are going to be decided this week in the nfc east a lot of things what do you got for me on this one yeah, things are getting interesting, uh, like like you said, in the NFC East because um, Washington. I looked at their schedule. I think it's all divisional opponents down the stretch. I think they play. I think it's they play Philadelphia and then they play Dallas again. I think they play New York. And then they, I think it's essentially all divisional oh, opponents down the stretch for them. So um, when divisional opponents are playing divisional opponents, um, losses are going to get stacked up yep. for all teams, yep. and so. Um, you know, when it's unfortunate, you know, um, for some of the teams because <laughs> you, you, you really don't know what's going to happen. So Philly could somehow, you know, move their way all the way up into the first seed just with all these divisional games. Yeah. It's crazy to think about. Yeah. So um, how they design the schedule for the NFC East, definitely very interesting. Um, that being said, I think Washington gets a bounce back win here, although I do believe it could go either way and it being in Philly. Uh, that makes it a little bit interesting, too. Uh, so Washington's going to have to go on the road. Um, so I'm going to say Washington bounces back from that rough uh, loss over the weekend, and they win this one against Philadelphia 24-21. to We got the scores, but we didn't get the teams. I like it. With a healthy Jalen Hurts, with, you know, with an injured kind of Washington offense, Terry McLaurin going into the concussion protocol, Logan Thomas going down with an ACL, Tyler Heineke with that knee injury. We'll see how he does. Uh, I think the Eagles strike here, and I think they get a massive division win, throwing them into the conversation for stealing the division away from Dallas. I mean, if you would have told me that Dallas would blow this division lead at the beginning of the season, I, I would have said probably, because I, I could see the Dallas Cowboys doing that. Freaking choke artist. I got the Philadelphia Eagles, 24 to 21. Nipping at the heels of the Cowboys. Can the Cowboys hold on to that division? We're going to find out. We are going to find out. Next up, we got the Tennessee Titans traveling to Pittsburgh to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. What do you got for me? I'm going to say that uh, Tennessee comes out and gets this win. I think it could go either way, but I think Pittsburgh, you know, they, I mean, they've, they've showed flashes, but I think that they're kind of, I, I, I think that they've kind of, they're at the end. I think that, you know, Roethlisberger is done. I don't see him coming back next year. And um, I think that there's not a lot of gas left in the tank for Pittsburgh. I think that Tennessee comes in here and they win this one. Uh, 28 to 17 and uh, they kind of take Pittsburgh out of that playoff talk yeah you know after Minnesota looked at looked to handle business last week and then like they always do right the Steelers biggest lingerers in the NFL that's all they do they just linger around they can never go away well all that changes this week the Titans get a big win ending the Steelers season 
ending Ben's career, seeing the Steelers go into a rebuild or a retool, whatever, into mediocrity is what I hope they go. Uh, but I got the Tennessee Titans, 28-24, big victory, big, big victory here. And our last game of the morning, we got, and come on, everyone knows my favorite team's name, we got the Houston Dumpster Fire Texans traveling to Florida to the city of Jacksonville to take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. What do you got for me? And, and, and I was so close to sending you like, uh, like a voice message. One of the voice messages on iMessage, like saying your whole Houston Dumpster Fire text line just the way you say it. Uh, but they let me down, man. They let me down. They weren't able to. And, and you know, I was doing some begging on that one because Houston, I mean, what do people expect? Houston's going to be Seattle, but I don't care. I scoreboard watch every single Seattle game. <laughs> hoping that your Houston Dumpster Fire Texans were able to get it done, which they weren't, yeah. but that's okay. The Gestapo's coming this weekend. But back to this game, um, you know, Houston just, no. Uh, I'm going to say Jacksonville okay. wins this one. I, I'm not picking them for the rest of the year. You guys let me down. <laughs> the one game that I wanted you guys to handle business on, you went ahead and blew it. You let the lingerers, to talk about the king, uh, the, the, the linger. <laughs> Both the lingers of the AFC are the Steelers, and the lingers of the NFC is clearly Facts. the Seahawks. Facts. They are like cockroaches. <laughs> so Houston weren't able to get rid of them. Um, so uh, I'm just going to have to rely on the Rams. But back to this. Jacksonville wins this one um, in an ugly one, a gross one, 17 to 13. Okay, okay. You know, after learning, you know, I'm, I'm going I, – well, after learning from my mistake the first time, I don't trust the Jaguars at all. I don't trust them at all to do anything, let alone to I, I don't even trust well, you them. You trust Houston, uh, and you trust Houston. I, I don't trust. I don't trust the Jaguars to take a. I, I don't even know who wipes their in the toilets. What about Houston? Oh, oh, we 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 are going, my friend, for the first time. All season long, I, I checked. Oh. I checked. I have not picked them. We are going with, let's say it again with me, Houston Dumpster Fire Texans. We're going with the Houston Dumpster Fire Texans oh, to get it done in an ugly a toilet bowl like 5.0. We've had some toilet bowl games. This might be the king of the toilet bowls. We're going Houston Texans 24 to 17, uh, getting the job done. Done. Getting the job done on the road. Ugh. Jacksonville. Can't trust them at all. Moving on to the afternoon games. Leading us off. Big game here for both teams. We got the Cincinnati Bengals traveling to Denver to take on the Denver Broncos. What do you got for me? Man, uh, these two teams, um, they, they're kind of, uh, you know, I feel like they're very evenly matched. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, that, but this is the this is the thing here. I'm giving the quarterbacking edge clearly to, to, to Joe Burrow. So um, I think that uh, Joe Burrow leads the Cincinnati Bengals. I think you guys get the run game going. I think Jamar Chase continues to do his thing. And I think that you guys get a, a big victory on the road in mile high, 24 to 20. I think that it's a big bounce back victory. I think your team comes together. Um, I, I, I think Denver, I think they're they're good, but I just don't think that they're good enough to stop uh, Joe Burrow. Yeah, you know, after a tough loss last week, never really be, never really able to get ever out of their own way, right? I mean, the heavens, the heavens just opened up and parted, and we're like, oh! They had a chance. They had a chance to take the division lead. It was right there. But what do they do? What do they do? Just like they do everything, they bungle it up. Bungle it up. Look flat last week. Secondary is atrocious. Our line is starting to worry me. Now we're traveling to Denver to take on a warm Denver team. I'm not going to say they're hot yet, but they're a warm Denver team. They're, they're in the right direction. Uh, this is even bigger. This is even a bigger needed win for the Bengals this week because with the injuries to Lamar, who knows what Ravens team we're going to see. So they may have another opportunity. So the Bengals here. The Bengals. The frickin' Bengals have to have this game if they want any chance of a playoff. If they want to sniff the playoffs at all, they have to win this game. Bengals win it 28-21, much needed. Hopefully, hopefully thrusting them into the division lead. 
Time will tell, though. Time will tell. Next up, we got the Atlanta Falcons traveling to Santa Clara to take on the San Francisco 49ers. What do you got for me? This is, uh, it's, it's kind of funny because it was around the same time that we went two years ago where we saw uh, yep. Leo Jones catch the goal line. I mean, it was a heartbreaker. Uh, but just a hell of a game to watch, uh, you know, Julio Jones do his thing. It was awesome to actually see that person. I had never seen yeah. Julio before. Um, so I'm thankful that I got a chance to go out there because he's one of the great wide receivers uh, of my lifetime, of our lifetime. And uh, just incredible talent. Um, I think that, uh, I think it goes a different way this time. I think that the 49ers are able to beat Atlanta. I do think it's going to be a close one, uh, but I think that the 49ers are able to win this one. Um, I think our offense gets going. I think that, uh, you know, George Kittle continues to do his thing. Big shout out to him. He's been uh, a force to be reckoned with. He's been leading the team um, in receptions and just making those key plays on third down. So I've yeah. uh, been very impressed with George Kittle and his leadership. Um, and, you know, give Jimmy some credit. Uh, I know I've been critical of him and just because of his inconsistencies throughout the year. But, Playing you know, better. Yeah, just to be able to put some drives together and get us in a position to win games, uh, that's really important. And I think that he's, you know, I think it comes down to that at the end of the game. Um, I think that, you know, somehow, some way, we're able to pull this one out. I'm going to say that we win this one 28-24 uh, to 24 against Atlanta. I like it, yeah. You know, on the other side of the coin, right, after the 49ers got a massive win for their season, keeping their playoff hopes alive and possible division hopes alive. It's still not out of the question yet. It's still not out of the question yet. Maybe after this week if Arizona wins and the Rams win, but it's still not out of the question. Uh, the Niners do have a couple cupcake games coming up, especially against one of my favorite teams, uh, and we'll talk about that and break it down when that week comes. Uh, but, you know, the Niners have to win. They got to keep winning. They're like some of these teams here. They have to win, 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 and win. They can't stop winning. They got to have these games, and you can't lose to these teams that these games that you have to have. You have to have this game here. So the San Francisco 49ers, I got taken this one at home, 24 to 19, close game. Uh, but like you said, I think the offense comes through and I think the defense uh, steps up again, kind of somehow like they did last week. Uh, but I think that line, or sorry, the D-line and Nick Bosa and the, and the linebackers kind of help out the secondary, who's just absolutely garbage. Uh, and I think they get a big victory at home, 24-19 uh, against an Atlanta Falcons team who's just not good. I mean, that's just, let's just say what they are. They're just not good at all. Next up, we got, and I know this game you're looking forward to. I'm ready to hear this fire. We got the Seattle Seahawks traveling to... So by Stadium, not to take on the Chargers, but to take on their division rival, the Los Angeles Rams. What do you got for me on this one? So I loved what I saw out of Los Angeles on Monday night. I think that they played um, in Arizona extremely well. Um, you know, not having Jalen Ramsey was big. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to return, but I don't. Either way, I don't see that being an issue for Los Angeles. I think their defensive line is uh, really, really good. I think that uh, you know uh, Matt Stafford and um, o Odell are starting to click. Um, I think that Cooper Cup is a dominant, dominant wide receiver. And I think that it doesn't matter who the running back is, whether it's Sony Michelle or Daryl Henderson, they can run the ball extremely well. So Sean McVay, um, we see he's able to dial up plays very well. And yeah. um, this this team is now playing as a unit. So, um, you know, I am very excited for this game because I think that Seattle, they're going to come out and hit Seattle in the mouth. And this is my thing. Seattle's lingering around again. They're five and eight, right? Yep. And every other team is six and seven, yep. and then the Niners are seven and six. So they have a chance at the playoffs. Now this is my thing. People aren't really talking about them because I, I don't think. But this is my thing. Uh, it ain't over till it's over. I need to see the yep. Gestapo. I need to see the guillotine. I need to see it happen. Um, I am just. I am praying that they come out and kick their ass because this is my thing. Um, if they lose this game, it'll be the first losing season in Pete Carroll, Russell Wilson's yeah. career yeah. Um, on the Seahawks. And it would just be a defining, amazing moment because it'll solidify everything that they're the downfall of that team. Yeah, if true. they somehow win this game, I believe they rattle off wins to the rest of the season and they make the playoffs somehow. So this <laughs> needs to happen where you're losing this game, you're dropping to five and nine. Your shot in the playoffs is over. 
So then you're not, these players aren't going to come out and play as hard, I don't believe, because you don't want to risk a career ending injury or anything like that. So, um, and, and you start dropping losses and then you, you, you end up probably somewhere around maybe six and 11, not, not nine and eight. So we need to make sure this is a game that I am heavily invested into, even though it's at the same time as 49ers, I'll be scoreboard watching. But I don't think that Seattle has a chance to beat L.A. after L.A. just beat Arizona. I think that Seattle looked good against a garbage-ass team. Yep. They're not going to come to um, Los Angeles. And somehow, without, you know, their best safety and, you know, with you know with their, with their sorry-ass defense, and shut down L.A. Yep. I got L.A. winning this game 35-21. Yeah, you know, after a much-needed win, right? A much-needed win on the road last week in Arizona, now back at home. Yeah, I think they absolutely destroy the Seahawks. Uh, I, this team looks overall to be getting more, you know, together, more cohesiveness with each other. They seem to be getting stronger week after week. Uh, Matt Stafford seems to be out of his little rut that he was in, uh, which seems to make him an even better quarterback. Odell seems to fit into this offense perfectly. Uh, you know, once they get Daryl Henderson back, it could be scary. It could be scary for the rest of the league. Cooper Cup, you know, we talked about it, top three receivers in the league. Uh, it could be a scary thing for the rest of the league. I got the, the Los Angeles Rams 42-21 dominating. Dominating the Seattle Seahawks. And like you said, handing them their first, their first losing season under Pete Carroll. Next up, we got the Green Bay Packers traveling to Baltimore to take on the Baltimore Ravens. What do you got for me? Yeah, the, the, since the Baltimore Ravens quarterbacking situation is up in the air, I think that's literally all I'm going to go off of. You have a quarter, you, you have an unproven quarterback, yeah. and uh, Hundley. Is that is that yep. Hundley? Yeah, okay. Yep. And then you and then you got. Uh, I just don't know much about the guy, um, other than you know he, he 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 can make some plays, but he he's not Lamar Jackson. That's and true. so um, that's and true. Lamar's been struggling this year as well. Yep. So. Um, you can't expect the backup quarterback to be anything like a superstar quarterback. Like I said, they could probably get some points up on the board. I think that they can, you know, have some efficient drives. But um, at the end of the day, you're going against one of the all-time greats, one of the best quarterbacks of our entire lifetime, um, Aaron Rodgers. And uh, that offense is clicking. They've been playing extremely well down the stretch. Yep. And, um, you know, give them some credit. So uh, I think Green Bay comes out and beats Baltimore pretty easily. I'm going to say Green Bay wins this one 35-17. Uh, to 17. Yeah, you know, after the injury Lamar took last week, it seems like he may, you know, he may want he, he may want to play on that hurt ankle. But, you know, with the way he's been playing lately, I almost would rather have a, a hurt Lamar Jackson playing than a healthy Tyler Huntley playing. Because like you said, the kid can ball. The kid can ball. He can make some plays, right? Rough week last week, but it's still as far as backup goes. He's fairly solid. He can play fairly solid. He can keep that team in games. Uh, and, you know, I, I think the Packers... The Packers are rolling, yeah. The Packers are absolutely rolling right now. I think they get a big win, 35 to 20, uh, handling handling business. Hopefully, hopefully, helping the Bengals get back into first place. Uh, we shall see. I mean, the, 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 they're serving it up to them. They're serving it up to them. They just gotta take it. Just freaking reach out and grab it. So I got the Green Bay Packers, 35 to 20, handling business on the road. Moving on to Sunday night, we got a rematch of an upset earlier on in the season. We got the New Orleans Saints traveling to Tampa Bay to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What do you got for me? Yeah, I think Tampa Bay is, a, they're dominant at home. I think that, uh, you know, when the stakes were high, Tom Brady was able to, you know, get it done again in overtime. Yeah. That was a thriller. Um, I didn't catch most of the game, but... You know, immediately after the 49ers and Bengals game, it switched over to um, this game, and it was an overtime, and <laughs> essentially it was a pass to Perryman, and that was it. So it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And crazy so, game. Crazy game. I can't tell you how many times I've seen Tom Brady do that, and uh, I don't think that this one's any different. I think that New Orleans comes in and struggles against Tampa Bay. Um, they you know, and uh, Tampa Bay is able to get this one, uh, 38 to 27. Yeah, you know, I don't know who's going to stop this Bucks team. I really don't. You know, Brady only looks to be getting better. Uh, you know, usually when people hit 40, uh, that's when you kind of, you, you can kind of see the, oh, the end is coming, right? The this guy only has one more year, two more years, right? For Tom, like Steve Young said on Monday night, 
you look at Tom, you don't know when he's going to stop playing. He can play till he's 50 years old if you wanted to, I'm sure. He can play well into his 50s, I'm sure. As crazy as that sounds. As crazy as that sounds. <laughs> Tom, if he wanted to, I'm sure he'd be like 52 years old, still slinging and breaking records. This dude can throw for like a thousand touchdowns before he ends up just leaving the NFL. I mean, Tom, Tom Brady is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous what he's doing. And right now, it looks like he's going to win the MVP, which is it, it, crazier to think than, than than him being like, what is he, 45 now? Is he 43? 44. 44? Yeah, 44 now. I mean, he seriously could. He could seriously play till he's 50 years old. I guarantee, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. Uh, I think, you know, they, they that big win, that big win last week, I think fuels the momentum into this week. I think they want to get revenge after that upset that they took uh, against the Saints the, the first time. So I got the Bucks winning 42-28 here and a guaranteed victory. I'm going guaranteed victory this week that the Bucks get revenge on the Saints and just further, further, further just dominating the season. Absolutely dominating the season. And our last game up on Monday night, we got the Minnesota Vikings traveling to the Windy City of Chicago to take on the Chicago Bears. What do you got for me? Yeah, Minnesota, um, you know, they, they, they're definitely still in the playoff hunt. Uh, this is a must win for them because to keep their playoff hopes alive, and I think that they come through. I think that uh, Chicago, uh, you see bits and pieces of Justin Fields and what they have, but yeah, I think that uh, I'm going to reiterate what you've been saying all season until they get rid of Matt Nagy. I don't see, uh, I don't, I don't foresee any big changes yeah. uh, for the Bears. I think that they need that to kind of revamp uh, the, the locker room to kind of, you know. The morale is kind of down. I feel like for Chicago, I yeah. think that you see yeah. glitz and uh, glamours of what they can, what they are capable of, because there is some talent on that team. And like I said, I've always been a, a believer of Justin Fields after what I saw him do against Clemson and um, that uh, playoff game, that yeah. college football playoff game. Um, you know, hurt regardless. I mean, he is a warrior. Um, I, I really like the, I really like the dude, and I, I think that he's going to have a really good career. But, um, yeah, I just think Minnesota's going to win this game. I think that the main thing we're looking at here is coaching. I just don't think that Chicago's – I don't think that Matt Nagy's able to coach Chicago uh, to, to, to beat a, 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 a team like Minnesota. I think Minnesota knows them very well. They know their tendencies. They understand Matt Nagy. Um, I think that Minnesota wins this one 31-17. Um, to 17. Yeah, you know, after a hard-fought victory last week where, you know, they were saved by a great defensive play at the end there in the end zone. Uh, you know, the Vikings go on the road. They need. They also need a win. They need much-needed wins here as well, right? So I think they get a much-needed win against the Bears. And like you said, right, Justin Fields, looks. he's looked good. He's looked good the last couple weeks. You know, so if that's a sign of anything to come, then I'm excited to see what happens next season. If he's, if he's maturing right now uh, into what we all kind of thought he would wanted he was going to be which is a great dual threat quarterback uh i think I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what happens next year again yes you know my stance fire matt Nagy needs to happen they need a new head coach they need someone who can teach this kid how to be a freaking superstar because this kid is a superstar so uh i think he, justin fields needs all the help he can get so go out and get him that help i mean i i don't know if the bears like being mediocre i'm i guess they do but you know if if they want to stop being mediocre Go out and get this kid help so he can have a great season next season. But as far as that goes, I got Minnesota Vikings getting a massive, massive, massive win here on the road in the division, 35-21. Uh, kind of saving. They're, they're kind of in limbo right now. They're kind of in purgatory with the with the playoffs. Uh, we'll see what they can do. They got to get healthy. Dalvin Cook coming out of nowhere last week. Supposed to be out three weeks. Comes out one week. Goes off. So who knows? Who knows what this team can do? This team is dangerous. I wouldn't want to play this team if I had to play them in the wild card game. So watch out for the Minnesota Vikings, but I think they get a big victory 35 to 21 on Monday night. And that'll do it. And that will do it for the full slate of games that we have on tap for you next week. And that'll do it for this week's edition of Meet on the 50. As always, Brandon and I want to thank you, right, for taking the time, our audience, watching the video, investing your time. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got something from it. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Brandon and I welcome you to the videos. We hope that we keep bringing you back week after week. We're going to be here the rest of the season. We're going to be here for seasons to come. So make sure to join, join us, join with us, join us on this journey because it is set to be a long one. And of course, 
Thank you for taking the time for hearing what we have to say. Brandon, any last words for the people? Enjoy the full slate of games, and um, you know I, I'm really hoping that Seattle Seahawks lose that game. Um, that's the most important thing this weekend. I think that I'd rather see Seattle lose that game than the 49ers win. I'm not gonna go that far, but um, <laughs> uh, you know, obviously I need the Niners to handle business. Yeah. But it's a pretty close second. I think that uh, you know Niners handling business, and then watching them lose. That'd be, that'd be really big. And then uh, for your sake, I definitely hope that the Bengals are able to get it done. Um, I, you know, and, and the Ravens drop that game so that, yep. you know, regardless of what happened last week, uh, that your team is able yep. to there you go. Um, hold on to that number one seed. I like it, you know. And, and like I say every single week, I want to thank you, sir, for your time, thoughts, analysis, expectations, predictions, all that good stuff. Thank you for joining me all season long. We got four more weeks of doing this. I'm juiced, and then we got the playoffs. We got more time to come. But as always, thank you for joining me. Love it, love it, love it. If you liked what you saw at any point during today, please smash that like button, smash the subscribe button, and just tap on that bell notification. That way, anytime new episodes drop, and they drop every Wednesday and Friday, you're right there, right there to consume the content. Because at, if you watch this video at all, right, you know that we are always dropping the knowledge, right? It's right there at your feet. You just gotta pick it up, shove it in that head of your shaking around, and boom, better fantasy player, better knowledgeable football human being, right? Because that is what it's about. If you're not growing, you are dying, right? So smash that like button, smash the subscribe button, and just tap on that bell notification to stay up to date on all the latest content. And the best part about it, it's completely free. It doesn't cost you a single thing to do any of those three things. So just do them all, because it doesn't cost you a thing. Right? And if you want more Fantasy Time, follow us on Twitter at Fantasy Time 2021. Follow us on Facebook at, Fan at the Fantasy Guy 2021. And then follow us on YouTube at Fantasy Time 2021. The links for the Google Sheet will be down in the, in the description. If you want a recap of everything we talked about, if you want a recap of the entire season, click on that. Download it, digest it, ingest it, get it in your brains, memorize it. Uh, just get everything you can from that Google Sheets because it is there for you. That will do it for this episode of Fantasy Time. As always, joining me, one of my best friends, Brandon Sullivan. I am Jacob Cutler, the Fantasy Guy. And for Brandon and I, we shall see you next week.